All right, well, let's take a look at this mess. See what we can do here. While you guys are listening to music on my YouTube channel, which unfortunately I have to use particular music that uh, keeps it so I can make a few cents on a video. Um, I'm listening to this Tree Lab speaker and I was listening to it on, on my last video and I only used like 25% battery life. It was on all day. So the battery life on this thing is pretty good and I had the volume up pretty loud and it actually gets pretty loud for such a small speaker and this tiny little thing has pretty good sound. So if you're looking for something like that, it might be handy. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Again, they comped me this speaker so I feel like, you know, that they should, you know, if you if somebody likes it or whatever, if they want to buy it, um, you can also do that through my Amazon. And I get paid pennies on that. So anyway, if you're interested in something like this, check it out. It actually, I didn't think it's too bad of a speaker. It may not be the cheapest price of one. Um, I had this other one. It's all dusty. Um, this is a Anchor. And it, it's actually had really good quality sound, a little bit better quality sound than this one. Just a slight bit. But um, the problem with it is the battery finally went out on it. And it the battery life was only about four hours on this and this one here is like four times the battery life of this one so it's kind of cool uh, so that's if you're looking for something like that like i said we'll move on to the car now so i'm gonna cut this out i'm gonna cut this piece out of here then i'm gonna get some of this rust off of here i'd like to remove these doors get all that stuff done so that this can sit outside. Uh, I, I gotta have to do something with this. I don't know if I'll get that in this video. And this piece in here is all rusted out. So I'm gonna get epoxy primer on all this too before I get busy on that Gia. But I don't know how much of this I'll get in the video, but I'm definitely gonna do this piece. Sorry about the noise. Um, and so my plan is to do this. My plan is to do this, um, go ahead and, it, there's a couple different ways you could do it. I was going to explain this to you because some of you guys are going to be like, why didn't you do it this way? And, and you need to, when you do your metal work, you have to kind of think about what's the easiest way to get the best result. And um, right here, I don't have, this would be a very difficult seam if I could uh, strip it from that seam and then and I had this seam here. It'd be a very difficult seam to get to look. Well, I could do it, but I'm, I'm saying if you had to, you could do it. But um, it's much easier since we don't need to go into that seam to actually get a excellent result by cutting about right here. I'm going to say there's wire right here, so I got to be careful. I don't want to burn that wire, so I'm trying to figure out. I might. I don't want to pull it. I don't want to pull the wire out. And I'm going to try and leave it in there, as hopefully I can, and just tack it along. And that one I'll probably do some cooling tacks on it to keep that wire from getting lit up. But I'm going to think, I'm thinking if I, if I weld it over here, it would be easiest to grind. So I'm going to butt weld it along here. And then, say around here gotta be down far enough to get rid of that kind of looking at this one so uh, maybe I'll come down a little bit further and go right across here and you might be saying why are you gonna weld it right through the middle of that you know versus trying to cut it and weld it across here trying to weld across here and line that up is gonna be much more difficult to do getting this little edge to line up in that edge and this to line up probably not going to happen very easy so i know that i can weld right through the middle of something flat it's much easier to approach so i think i'll go right along here you know you don't want to go through this thing it's impossible to fix not impossible but very difficult you can go along here I'll use that same cut they got there. Go to here for now. And this one I might shorten. 
I have to think about, you know, I'm going to have to fix some stuff in here. So once I get this cut off is when I'll really make my final decision. But I'm just kind of figuring out about what I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and cut this because I'm going to use this section or less, you know, to patch in there. Let's see, am I far enough, far enough out for that? So I'm going to have to cut out to right here, right? This is rusty right to there. So maybe I should make sure that I cross this one out. And yes, you can use a Sharpie. I was watching another guy's channel. He says, he is a Sharpie and it goes all the way through the metal. Let me tell you where not to use a Sharpie. Do not use a Sharpie on primer because <laughs> it'll bleed through paint and you'll have to sand all the primer all the way off to get it out on metal it's fine if you use a sharpie on metal it comes off easily and it doesn't generally bleed upward it can go through the primer the other way but putting it on primer is a no-no that's not a good idea you use a pencil on something like primer on something that's primer not a sharpie so the issue with this could be that it's going to warp, you know, a little. Um, and if it's in the middle of this panel here, it'll be easier if I got to put filler to actually correct something. And if it's if it's on the edge here, you know, it's a little tougher to manage with this little piece of the rubber. So I felt like going right through the middle is probably the best bet. So that's what I'm going to do on that. So, I mean, I could do it at a, a shape if I needed to, but it, it it's easier. More straight lines are a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and just run with this, and then I'll straighten it out or whatever. I'll straighten it out. I'm just showing you kind of where I'm doing it. I'm not going to probably do it exactly in that place because on this piece, I'm going to go ahead and use the plasma cutter because it's faster, and I'm going to end up cutting that again. And on this piece, I think I'm going to use my cutoff wheel. I do have to check underneath here. There's some wiring that again goes up underneath here. And I think I've got it all out. So if you're doing something like this, make sure that you're not going to cut through the wires. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to replace the harness on this yet, but you know, may have to. If I don't have to, I'm not going to because they're a pain in the butt. And if it's in good shape, then you know, I like the original wire. Because it's there's little soldered ends on it and stuff that I'd like to keep if I can. So let's get this off here and take a look at it.
All right, let's see what the problems are, what things arise. Uh, I guess this thing moved when I was doing it. People get, oh my God, it's got a gap. I'm gonna have to just make a little sliver and just real long one. I, what I do is I'll just kind of hold it there and I'll just butt that in and fill it in and then I'll just trim it off and you know trim it into place and just knock it down, put it in there. You don't have to make a perfect piece. It doesn't matter. But this end here, I can't get inside to um, re take the piece out. So I've got to. Maybe once that gets in place, so I got to clamp it here. So I've got to finish. There's some inner pieces that are worn, gone right here. I've got to make this. This part's going to be tough. I'll show you in a second. So on this piece too, I'm going to start in the middle when I do the butt cut and butt method. I'm going to cut a line like right here. So I'll cut a line somewhere in the middle. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. Right here and then right here. And what that's going to do is give me a place to start my peeling. So what I'll do is I'll say I'll weld this in first. Okay, then I'll cut this little line here. And then I'll push this down. Okay, maybe I'll spot weld it a couple places along here. I'll clean it, of course, first. But I'm just showing you the idea first. Um... Then I got, then when I, if I cut it like this, what I'll do is I'll spot weld it here and here, and then I'll be able to start peeling it back and taking the, uh, the two layers. So I'll take one layer off the top and one off the bottom, but I'll be able to use this little cut to do it. Now, the reason I want to start in the middle, and you know, a lot of times you start in a corner when you do a cut to butt type of thing, because it's easiest. You start in a corner, you cut here and you cut here and you push it, you know, so they, line up and then you butt it here and then you just start cutting and butting you cut a little bit and then you just butt it and you know spot weld it you know put it put the butts together and then spot weld it you do that along here but the problem with this long panel and it being that, that it has, has a windshield in it you know if you move from here to there way across there it might start to move as you get across and then you'll have this part off but I'm going to weld that part in first too. So before I do my cutting, but I have to weld this in. So, and I also have to cut this and make sure that it's going to line up. So I'm going to have to make this part a nice tight butt first. And then this part, I'll just cut it into butt because it's faster. I mean, I could try and cut this through two layers and get it perfect. And all this, try and do it beforehand, but it might be easier because I can reach behind here. Um, to just go ahead and do it as I go. So there's a couple different ways to do it. You could try and fit this whole panel in. Honestly, you're going to frustrate yourself a bit. You're going to have the gaps like that. You know, this is one little gap like that. It's not a big deal. But if you got the whole thing, uh, that's a nightmare. It's just it just takes a long time. So it's easier to cut cut it through two layers and then butt it as you go. Again, start in the middle work my way this way in the middle go that way so that it, it you know there is some shrinkage that happens when you're when you're welding those two two you'll notice that it goes low because what happens is um you know when you have that little bit of a gap in the metal when you weld it 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 wants to shrink together a little bit so and that won't really hurt us here the windshield's still going to fit that's not a big deal um Let's look at the other side here. We've got take this piece out and then look here. So I've got my cut and butt mark. And then I've got to fix all these little things. Now this is this stuff is a pain in the butt. So I've got to cut out a little section. And uh, and on this part I'll use my little saw. I'll just be really careful with my little saw and I'll cut this off and then I'll peel this these two layers apart. If you notice, I do that. I peeled it like a can of spam. Peel it and roll it up. It's the easiest way to you know, all these guys drill their spot welds. I just go, what? What are you doing, man? Oh no, I gotta drill all the spot welds. It's like, huh. Okay, go ahead. I'll just peel it. It's fine. 
Yeah, you end up with a little bit of jaggedy edge. You just straighten it out with your hammer and dolly like I did. You saw me do that. You know, it's it's not hard. You know, it, uh, making it hard takes a lot of time to do all that stuff. But, you know, everybody can do it their own way. This here, um, i got to peel off the two layers. I'm going to cut that. I know I'm already up too high, so I'll just cut it. You know, cut it right there where it's at and then just peel that piece out. Can't have my little two layers here that won't help then i've got to make this piece which it kind of goes on here and it kind of comes up and over and out i don't know if you can hear goes it goes out a little bit and then up <laughs> so it's really not an easy piece to make let's look, at, let's look at the other side it's still intact i think yeah so if you see here it kind of goes out a bit and then it goes up can see that I can get you really close here um, it goes out and it comes up so it's like a can't really see it very good you can't see it either I don't know if that helps but it, it goes out and up a little bit it's almost the thickness of metal but not really so it's it's going to be a little bit challenging to make, and this one looks pretty bad too, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'll do some more thinking, guys, before I just do this. That's why I always do stuff. A lot of times the camera's off, and I'm thinking for an hour or two hours or whatever before I actually do the procedure. So I just look at it. You know, I start looking at it and figuring out. So like this piece, I'll just cut out here. And I'll just make a little patch for that. Not hard. It's actually arched and stuff, but I'll just make it flat and just put it in there. It's not that arched. It's a little bit. So, you know, it'll kind of fit a piece in there. Let's put a straight piece in, then I'll kind of, I could, sh I could, stretch it a little bit maybe I'll do that I'll stretch it I'll make an L piece and then I'll stretch this edge that goes less this edge right here I'll stretch it a little bit this one and then it'll make that arch a little bit I'll make that I don't know if I'll butt that it probably doesn't really matter I may just underlay it and then butt this edge just underlay it and fill it it's easier same same purpose why waste all my time trying to butt that it's getting to warp and stuff might as well just underlay it do it that way and then make sure that this end's butted and this end's butted all this end wherever it is we don't have a piece yet for that so yeah there's a lot of detail in here a lot of stuff to do and like i said i'll just cut through so you can see right here so i'll just cut from here to there right with this cutoff wheel and cut out the same thing a little bit here and then I'll have a starting point and I'll just cut through two layers a little bit I'll cut through two layers right here I'll go that way I'll go this way I'll push it down butt it weld it but I'll do that again after I pinch weld it here so and start at the windshield part and then do my buddy so anyway that's the plan. We'll see how it goes a little bit later. Talk to you later in the video.
I need to say this was not easy. Of course, you guys knew that already. Um, I didn't. No, I'm just kidding. I, I already knew it was not going to be very fun. So here's what it looks like before this piece goes in. Get that out of the way. So I weld this little bracket on. Kind of goes right there at the bottom edge where it rolls. And it kind of fits in there, and then this butts up against there it's gonna be a little tricky with these wires still in there honestly I don't want to pull them out not unless I if I have to pull them out I'll replace them I think at that point because it's gonna be that hard to get them out of there because they go all the way up in here and then they come down through the semi so this is like through a little hole and these little tabs here and then you got to go into the dome light up there shove it down in there and the other side doesn't have a dome light to give you <laughs> any help so it's even harder so I know how hard these are to pull um, the early the regular wiring harnesses aren't that hard to pull but these early ones are really hard that's why they changed them I think so let's see if it lines up I don't think I'm going to paint before I think I can reach up in there and pretty much get back to it from the bottom Get it pretty good. Yeah, this is gonna be hell on wheels to line up. I don't know. Maybe what I'll do is I'll butt. Uh, shoot. Can't really butt the end, can I? I have to get this to line up over here and get it to line up in the middle. And on, the, and on the right hand side all at the same time so it's going to be a little bit tough to just find the place that where it likes to go and kind of put it in place bring it back in a second I guess I kind of kind of got to do like just Put it in place and then weld it. This side's, I mean, I just got to get it to where it lines up pretty well, and then I'm going to have to just weld a couple spots and then tweak it a little more and then do this, this part last. Um, it doesn't look, really, it, it's just not going to be very easy. So, anyway, I'll probably just weld something in the middle to where it's at the right height here and then weld some something on each end and then just start working it working it from the middle in you know whatever a little bit here a little bit there just kind of do a little bit everywhere and just kind of bring it all together it's not gonna be very easy it's you know it's not that difficult really but Windshield needs to fit, so that's the most important thing. It should fit because I'm using this as my reference and I'm going just a hair lower down, more downward than where it is. So if I, if I just make sure that this is lined up but it's a little bit lower, like a half a, half a sixteenth or something, then it should fit in place if I just go with that. So that's what I'm saying. I start in the middle, I use that to line it up, and then just come to the ends and kind of work those in and get them started. And then kind of just work a little bit as it goes, you know, from here, there, just kind of work all the way around a little bit until it all lines up. Just got to kind of look at something like this and just as you do it, just kind of, you know, make sure it's going the direction you want it to. Otherwise, it'll get away from you. It'll be tough. I have to cut it back out. But I won't be able to fit the windshield in until after I get the whole thing welded in. So I just have to do like I usually do and just kind of wing it. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, I wing it. But it's, I, I usually am right. Usually it's right. So I just got to go with my instinct and just start in the middle, do that. 
and then just kind of work like I said both ends to make sure that these line up if make sure that if this is lined up the middle's lined up and that side's lined up then everything else should fall into place all right so this is what we ended up with so far I just went ahead and tacked it a couple spots in the middle then I did that edge right here and made sure it was perfect right there so then it goes down and around across there and then got this to line up here again you know and uh, had to play around with this because it was kind of this thing came it was out of shape I remember this part right here anyway we kind of had a little wing on it somewhere so I had to kind of conform it what I did is I butted here first and then I took a screwdriver in there and bent it back out a little bit and then lined it up better here back pounded it on a little bit and worked it to where they matched up and that's what we ended up with there so it's a little tiny bit off as far as the you know once I get done it'll be perfect but it's just you know this is gonna have to just be worked in this piece is gonna have to be worked into place if I have to work too much to put it in place, and I know my windshield is not going to fit. So, you know, you could try and measure this, but <laughs> let's look at it for a second here. So you'd have to mark here and here, and we didn't have anything really left here. There was those holes in it. So you'd have to mark different places to put it in the same place, and then how am I going to know that I marked it in the same place here? Because this is round, and this is round so you would be off the best way for to do one of these is to make sure that it's lined up where it's still <laughs> where there's something left um, and if it's a little bit too large if it's just a little bit too large it won't matter the windshield will fit if it's too small that's going to be a problem so i always like you see here i've got a little bit of a lip so this is lower than it was possibly originally I pretty much lined it up here it ended up moving around and that's where it ended up pretty much lined up so if anything it'll be too far down it, that's okay um, and then our windshield will still fit so that's how I usually do it usually uh, it works um, you know I'm not gonna say every time in the worst scenario the worst scenario is I could get a hammer and chisel and beat this around push it down after I'm done kind of a pain in the butt to do but hey what are you gonna do saving an old car that's how you do it
so crusty I, I always tell you guys you know leave the rubber on there because one thing you'll have that if you're going to reuse your chrome trim the problem is, is it's so crusty on the bottom edge it's just hard as a rock but I can just tell it's going to go it will go right in if it you know, if I put this edge in it will do it That's the rubber cracking. <laughs> it's just rotten. But yeah, if I put that edge in, it will go in. No problem. You can just feel it, it's gonna go. If it had the new rubber on it, it would just slide right in place. So if you're wondering. Right, let's take a look at it before filler. Won't need much in there, really. Well, it's just going to be 
a little tiny bit there's a little ding right there that's pretty good it's just a little bit low I pounded a little bit off camera so I straightened it out a bit that's plenty straight enough for filler that's probably the easiest way to do this job I'm trying to cut it through trying to cut it through here um, because you can't really lay one over the top to get it to line up so that would be much harder to do the I figured the easiest way is to get it on there and lay one over the top of the other one so that you know where to cut because if you tried to cut here and then trying to go through here you know you're not going to get one laid over the top right here just so you know if you tried it that way I mean if you had to do it you just got to do it you just have to start you know kick it in on and off and on and off and on and off until it's perfect and then weld it through there but uh, like if yours was totally gone up here but anyway I say it looks pretty good just a little bit low a bit of filler in there it'll be fine all right kind of hard to pound in there too I pounded some uh, but I used my long picker hit from underneath a bunch of times and then I used a dolly too so good enough ready for filler let's take a look at it after the set Well, I have to say guys, I think this turned out pretty good. There's not a lot of filler in that. It's just a little skim coat. You can tell because there's nothing around here. It's just barely enough to cover it. And it's pretty straight. So it fits really good. I got this part almost metal finished around here. And I can, I'll do a little bit more cleanup on that. After primer. This one's really good too. Almost no seam there. The rubber will come out to about the edge right there. So, yep. And I got all this all treated. This is done with OSFO. Cleaned it all out. Treated it. The rest is dead. Um, the next thing we're going to do is start working on some of these rust holes over here. And you'll want to see that video. I'm going to show you guys some nice little shortcuts to doing this stuff. Uh, you know, there's a lot of little rust holes here. There's little rust holes all along that edge. Okay, one right there, and it's real thin. Down there, down the edge there, and there's a way to fix that. It's not too hard to do. And then we got one over here, where this one got really thin and pitted. Again, I've killed the rust. Now what I'll do is I'll sand this sand off there's like a residue on there from the osfo i'll sand that off sand it back it down and then we'll fix this stuff and then prime all of that at the same time so i was going to prime this but i thought you know what i'm going to wait until i get all of this kind of done and just do the whole section in the front so we'll pull those doors off and maybe in the next video or something I'm having some trouble with some of the bolts otherwise I'd have them off I need two people to do that one over there to get the handle off just have to push in on it and it takes a hammer and punch so I can't do that yet so anyway that's where we're at now we've got that big milestone done the wind windshield repair section and now we'll do this hole too in the front too probably focus in on these little patches we'll see how that goes maybe they'll go really quick and I'll move on to the other in the same video um, but I've got to do that section in the middle to this one underneath which isn't hard a lot of people think oh my god that's a terrible hard section none of this stuff is really that hard this was a little more difficult because you got the window to go in but if you just stick with the old metal if you have old metal you can put it in the same place and generally it's going to fit uh, so I use that as reference and then uh, this one 
because uh, I have to finish it on both sides it has to be almost a metal finish and it really won't be that hard to do we'll see that one coming up soon I'll talk to you guys in the next one please make sure and subscribe see your comments and thanks for watching talk to you soon